Hey Squishies! Welcome back to another vlog. This is Gravity Falls Season 2, Episode 10. Um, Northwest Manor Noir? Northwest Mansion Noir? Something like that. Anyway, uh, this was another really good one. Um, I really enjoyed it. Just from a basic, like, entertainment level. Um, it had some great visuals, uh, with, like, really creative stuff in the way the haunting worked. Uh, the chanting animal heads, uh, were brilliant. Um, the fact that it turned people, that the ghost turned people to wood, you know, monsters turning people to stone is pretty common. I don't know that I've seen people being turned to wood very much. Uh, but it was very, very cool. I particularly liked the little detail. They would sprout a couple leaves as well. Like, they weren't just being turned into wooden statues. They were being turned into living trees. Um, it was also, like, surprisingly, like, bloody. Um, the guy had an axe in his head, and we actually saw, you know, we cut away right before it hit him in the flashback to, like, how he became a ghost. Um, and he spends most of the episode, like, the ghost with an axe in his head. Also interesting to me that the axe still exists. I don't know if that's going to be a thing that matters or not, but it, it is interesting that the axe was apparently, you know, material. Um, you know, where the rest of the ghost was ghost. Uh, but, of course, the most interesting thing here, uh, story-wise, is the character development for Pacifica. That she is rebelling a little bit against her parents, seems to be drawing closer to Dipper in some sense, uh, which makes sense because, you know, she's hitting that age where you rebel against her parents, and he strongly dislikes her parents, and her family strongly dislikes him, and he's, you know, the boy from the wrong side of town. Um, which is not to say that I think there's any kind of a romantic thing going on there. Um, I don't think that would make much sense. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, there's stuff here that I'm sure a dedicated Dipper Pacifica shipper could look at and say, oh yes, that's, that's ship, you know, ship material. But if you're not predisposed to shipping them, I don't see anything here that says that they're, you know, attracted to one another or interested in one another in that way, or really any other way. I don't think they're even going to be friends. I just think, like, he is a vehicle by which she begins to rebel a little bit more against her parents. Which is good and right and healthy. You know, especially when your parents are assholes like the Northwests. I love that it's continuing, like, the whole theme of Dipper's, like, class consciousness. That he is very aware that Pacific is the worst, He and that the Northwests are a terrible family. He is highly conscious of, like, the fact that their wealth and the spectacle they put on is a cover for... Just, you know, the fact that they have and others don't. And as he says, it's not just jealousy. It's a response to injustice. Um, it's not jealousy or envy. He doesn't want to be rich in their stead. He recognizes that that kind of imbalance and the way they give back essentially nothing is unfair and wrong. And he is properly angry at them for it. Um, you know, you can see it in the flashback. You know, where their wealth came from was lying and cheating, and in particular, they made promises to people in exchange for labor. They took the product of that labor and then didn't fulfill their promises. 
And that's half of where Old Wolf comes from. The other half comes from the you know owners of the means of production promising the bare minimum they can get away with to make to get labor out of people, you know, and exploiting them in a less cheating way. You know, there's an agreement beforehand, and they do fulfill the agreement, but it's still you know what the laborers receive is worth far less than what the owners receive, despite the fact that the laborers are the ones who did the actual work. And that's typical. That's capitalism in a nutshell. Um, it's gross, and it leads to horrifying inequality, and nobody really wants to do anything about it. And that's exactly the situation in Gravity Falls. You know, it's kind of a microcosm of that. The Northwest's own and do not work. And yet somehow, instead of the townsfolk rising up against them with pitchforks and torches, they just want in. They, they want to, you know, they, they want to crowd around their mansion to get a glimpse of the glamour, you know, instead of rebelling. In a way, they're a lot like Pacifica, except Pacifica's case, it's less that she's impressed by her parents and more she's intimidated by them. Um, I expected the bell thing to be something more sinister than it was. Uh, maybe because I was thinking of the bell in um, Over the Garden Wall that that one woman has, uh, aunt, the, the auntie, auntie and her uh, niece that had like the monster inside of her and the bell was used to control it, that whole thing. Um, I thought it was going to turn out to be like the bell was somehow connected to the weird magic going on, but then I also thought that this was going to turn out to be a poltergeist because we had set up, like, before, right before the flying dishes started, we had set up that uh, Pacifica was, you know, feeling constrained and wanted to express herself by wearing a slightly different color of dress and her parents wouldn't have it. And one of the variants on the poltergeist legend, yeah, um, and one that I remember being fairly common in, like, the kind, you know, um, news of the weird type stuff um, in, like, the late 80s, early 90s, was this, uh, it was this story about um, a family that was haunted by a poltergeist, and it turned out to actually be not a ghost, but the repressed anger and rebelliousness of their teenage daughter. That they were too controlling and too confining, and she had no space in which to express herself, and it sort of exploded out of her as this occult phenomenon. Which seems like the kind of thing Gravity Falls would do. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's more of an X-Files episode than a Gravity Falls episode, but I don't know. I, I could see it going there, and it seemed to be where it was headed until, you know, the Axe ghost showed up. And it turned out to be more of a class thing, which I'm cool with, you know. Um... Anytime a kid's show takes digs at our messed up class structure, uh, I am happy uh, because that's kind of the best place to do it. It kind of flies in under the radar and kids grow up understanding that these things are wrong instead of just they don't see any other way, they don't see any alternatives given, they don't see any criticism of it. And so they assume that, that, that how things are is how, the, is how things should be, which is a common and dangerous error. How things are is not how things should be. How things are is never how things should be. Nothing in this world is good enough. Um, everything needs to be improved. Everything needs to be better. Uh, 
And, you know, maybe if we inculcate enough children with those values, eventually there will be enough people to have an actual revolution instead of, you know, defensive voting that leads inevitably to losing ground to capitalism and conservatism. Who knows? Good news is the apocalypse is coming. Tomorrow, apparently. Um, 23 hours and change, according to the countdown on the laptop. 10 episodes into a 20-episode season seems early to pull that. But maybe it's a mid-season climax type thing. And then there'll be something bigger later on. I do like the wall hanging that implies some kind of Bill, uh, Bill Cipher worshipping forest cult. And I really wonder, is the implication that the Northwests are involved in such a thing and that's why it's hanging on their walls? Or does the tree imagery and the, you know, the colors that imply fire, is that tying it to the ghost? Is it suggesting that freeing and helping the ghost is somehow connected to this impending apocalypse. Dunno. Guess I'll find out not too long when I do uh, this month's bonus episode and watch some more Gravity Falls. Mm, but next episode is going to be some Dirty Pair. So I'll see you all then, and then bonus episode will be the next Gravity Falls. Bye!